Thanks for joining us this week. We have uh, our fourth installment of a weekly update to you about all things Children's Hospital and, and COVID related. We'll try to keep this one a little shorter today. Let's start with outpatient volumes. You heard us talk about that a couple of times. We continue to be very busy in the outpatient environment of care. Primary care, urgent care, ER. Our teams are stretched. We're able to get to patients and families when they need us. But we're stretched unlike this time of year that we would see in a normal cycle. About 10 days ago, we kind of saw our peak in terms of ER and urgent care volumes up in the 170s to 200s. That's come down about 15 to 18%. But that doesn't mean that the volume we're seeing is normal. And I wanna thank our team for the good work they're doing in these environments. On top of the things that we've been doing to help with the pandemic related to reactivation of the testing center, which continues to be busy in monoclonal infusions with Dr. Childs has talked about uh, over and over. And certainly the pediatricians who are in the community just on the front lines with phone calls, et cetera, et cetera. Hospital continues to be busy as well and we'll uh, publish the update on our census as well. But we had some comments, Dr. Childs, on our social media channels about vaccinations. And the real question that we've gotten over and over is one that parents, especially with those who are 12 and under, are asking, when's the vaccine gonna be available for my child? What do you know about that? Yeah, I wish we knew. Uh, we get hints of that from public health officials, sometimes media things that are not always accurate. Uh, there is a sense that maybe by the end of this calendar year, it, it will be available down to age five, but that's far from certain. So uh, that's, that's stressful for those uh, parents who are concerned about their children that are uh, five and up and not having access to the vaccine and having risk factors that they're worried about. So uh, we're monitoring that and we certainly will uh, provide uh, information about it as it becomes available and uh, what our response is to that. Which is another opportunity for us to say, for the parents who are in a household like that, the best thing they can do for their child is what? Vaccinate themselves. Vaccinate themselves. We've been saying it over and over. We'll continue to say it as we move forward. Monoclonal antibodies, we talked about it a lot. We've had a fair number of infusions over the last number of weeks. How's that going? How are patients responding? It's going very well. We're up to about 150 patients or so that we've infused. Um, the, uh, uh, we really appreciate the staff that have uh, been nimble to flex to be able to support that. Uh, there are several examples of them going above and beyond what we could expect in terms of uh, hours and availability, but they know it's important and for especially these high-risk patients that are 12 and up to get that and hopefully prevent them from being hospitalized. Uh, we have had two patients now admitted that got monoclonals, so uh, they got it late in the course. It did not prevent the hospitalization, but it prevent the hospitalization so far from being uh, a critical hospitalization. I think that's excellent. All the other patients have done well at home, and some of these patients had significant risk to get worse. So the hope relative to what we're seeing thus far is that perhaps the peak of COVID relative to kids is either there or happening. And when it does happen, we know that there's gonna be a trail of MISC. We talked about it last time. What should parents be looking for in terms of MISC? What did we see with the last wave? And have we seen our first MISC with this wave? So we do hope that the, the case trend, rising cases in the pediatric age group, we hope that what we're seeing suggests that's gonna go down. Uh, we are still seeing, as you, as you mentioned, a lot of hospital volume, and the sickest of those are teenagers that are getting it. As you might expect, younger patients sometimes need help in the hospital, but uh, quite often can handle this at home. But in that four week or so window after you get COVID, sometimes you didn't even know you had COVID, sometimes you did, there is the possibility of a rare complication, the MISC. We have seen our first case. Uh, we know from the other children's hospitals in the state that we're at where we are earlier that they have started to see this as well. So we're alerting pediatricians and, uh, and the community to be aware of the signs of that so that uh, as that li is likely to increase, uh, that, that they're 
recognizing it uh, and um, seeking care for that. When we had a big peak in January of pediatric COVID here, we, we saw 30 to 40 patients over about a six week period that had symptoms of MISC. And then after that, a, a few more uh, kind of straggled in that, uh, that had symptoms. We are concerned about that kind of volume coming up soon. So the last number of weeks, we've tried to keep an active set of communications going out from Children's Hospital so that you can know what's happening, so that you can make good decisions for your son, your daughter, your family, yourself. Um, and we spend a disproportionate amount of time on COVID-related messages. But it's also a good time to remind everybody that COVID is just one illness that we face in the community every day, and that healthy living is a good way to live. So if you're mom and dad, or if you're a son or daughter and you're watching this today, remember, drink your water, eat your vegetables, get outside, find some fresh air, find some activity, surround yourself with people that love you, then you love them. Find some ways to find respite and joy, and dare I say, laughter, even during a time that's really challenging. All those things we know contribute to health and well-being, and the healthier we are in our daily lives, the less we get concerned about COVID or any other disease. And don't forget, if you haven't gotten the vaccine, please consider it. Please also make sure if you're sick, don't go to work, don't go to school, don't put other people at risk. And by all means, cover your cough, wash your hands, basic things of hygiene, of healthy living. Thank you for joining us. We hope and pray that we will continue to get through this together. Our team here is doing a tremendous job. We're proud of them. We're proud of how they're stretching and we appreciate your continued trust in us as we care for you and your children. Thank you.